there! Well, thanks for tuning in. This vibrant sunset in H2O water mixable oil paint is the subject of this lesson. But before we get into it, if you love art, then make sure that you log on to our website at www.montmart.net as we have hundreds in the TV category there, as well as links to our Facebook and Instagram pages, as well as to our art club, The Creative Connection. I'm using a 60 by 121 centimetre canvas for this piece. There is a PDF for the lesson that can be downloaded from a tab next to this project at our website. In the PDF is an outline with all the key cloud placements. The most important element is the horizon line. This lies approximately two thirds of the way down the canvas. When this is being laid in, don't make the line work too dark or it may be visible in areas after the paint is added. It's not always necessary to lay in the placement information, but for some projects, it helps to get a feel of how the work will be composed. Next, I lay out orange, yellow orange, and yellow ochre in satin series acrylic. I loosely lay it into the canvas with a 75 millimeter brush. I don't make the coat too consistent to add more interest. We add a tint also called a ground for two reasons. First, it seals the canvas so that the H2O oil paint isn't as inclined to be absorbed into the canvas. But more importantly, for this project, we need underlying tone to be distinguishable beneath our top coating areas. But I'll talk more about that when we come to it. I let this dry and lay in the first area with H2O. This is the area between the two main cloud banks. It is a bluey violet created from ultramarine, titanium white and crimson. I lay the paint on thinly with no medium added. A thin coat of oil makes it easier to blend colours into it smoothly. Plus, you have the advantage of the warmth of the ground coming through to an extent. I lay white around the edge of the cloud and then blend this into the blue of the sky. This will suggest the light peeking over those forming storm clouds. I use a tacklon filbert to lay in these areas. Filberts are good because the tip is curved so it allows for a wide variety of brush strokes. As I said, I have a main colour mix but add varying strengths of the colours made to create this mix and blend it in directly on the canvas. As this is a storm front sunset, there would be an amalgamation of many tones. The beauty of oils is that they blend very well and if you're judicious with each application, the blends can be controlled accurately. When adding a new tone to a canvas, don't wash the brush out. Instead, just wipe the excess paint off onto a rag, charge the brush with the new colour and blend it directly. As with all oils, the general rule is to mix the lighter colours into the darker tones. Of course, there will be times when a darker tone needs to be blended into a light tone, but if you follow the former rule, if you can, your colours generally stay fresh and clean. I mix some ultramarine violet and crimson into the area as well and keep the brush moving quickly to ensure any colour transitions are smooth. I add a little lemon yellow with titanium white and lay this directly above the bottom cloud and then gently blend it into the blue. You will notice there are very few colours used in this project. Of course these colours mixed together will make thousands of differing tones but those tones will generally be in harmony with each other. This is the pleasing byproduct of using a limited palette. It's comforting to know you don't have to rush either. Just take your time and keep going until you're happy with the way the streaks of tone look. As well, never fall into the trap of reducing a sky to a formula. It is never twice the same colour, so continue with the variance. Once I'm happy with the middle band of sky, I lay the sky in above the cloud to the left. You may have noticed on a forming storm front, the sky above said clouds is quite often very clear. So I create this with only white and ultramarine and then lay more white into it. I then move on to the clouds directly above the horizon. These are actually distant rain clouds and will have a purplish dirty tone to them. I lay in the sky blue first and add white, a touch of ultramarine violet and crimson and continue adding colours until I have a dirty tone that looks convincing. 
the sun breaks through around this area and causes a warm glow from within the cloud. So I scrub yellow into the area to suggest this. I carefully then blend the yellow into the violet. A word of caution, yellow and purple are opposite on the colour wheel, also known as companion colours. When companion colours are mixed, the resulting colour usually comes out as a muddy tertiary tone. So don't over mix it. I then lay some lemon yellow into the area where I want the sun to be situated. The sun is in effect being diffused behind the clouds. So there will be a warm glow around the actual hotspot that smoothly transitions. I lay this in quite thickly so that it is opaque and softly drag it into the orange around it. I then remove the yellow in the centre with a rag and lay straight titanium white into it and carefully blend this into the yellow. I don't want the white to be contaminated with the yellow at all as the sun is the main focal point and it needs to be stark. I move on to that top cloud now. This is the closest cloud to the viewer and because of its proximity it's the darkest in the composition and it's really full of rain. This mix is comprised of ultramarine violet, ultramarine blue, crimson and Payne's grey. I lay the paint on fairly thickly into the middle and drag that colour out to the edge. Use little circular strokes and take it out to the perimeter of the shape. Because you're dragging the colour to the edge, you can see the underlined orange ground come through. The cloud would not be as dense here, so it looks more roundish. A small filbert is the best brush for this as it's easy to create little convex shapes needed. You can then take a clean dry flat brush and soften the edges. The bottom of the cloud would receive a lot of that reflected light and there would be a foreseeable orange glow there. Gently mix them and you get a dirty tone in the transition. This colour suggests a cloud heavy with rain perfectly. I add some white into the centre of the cloud and softly blend it in. I can then move on to those low-lying distant clouds. To create these realistically, I use a small tacklon and scumble the blue-violet tone into the area. Scumble is a funny word, but it means to lightly charge a brush with colour and scrub it into the area. The benefit is that the underlying colour can be seen through it and the opacity can be regulated. The cloud to the right is closer, so it's higher in the sky and darker. As I lay this in, I dip my brush into the white and lighten the tone as I move across the canvas and soften any hard edges. I lay pure Payne's Grey into the bottom of the cloud and blend it in. Payne's Grey is a strong tone, so use it sparingly. Payne's Grey is a dark blue-grey colour and it's a very useful tone. It can be used as a mixer instead of black. I use a clean brush to remove tone from certain areas of the cloud so that the ground comes through again to give it more shape. Once I'm happy with the sky, I move on to the water and lay in a purple phthalo blue tint. Like the orange tint, this is done in acrylic so I don't have to wait around for it to dry. There is a saying, red sky at night, sailor's delight, red sky in the morning, sailor's warning, meaning obviously a storm was imminent. This is actually not a wives tale as a red sunset in the morning can mean that a high pressure system has already passed and a low pressure system storm front may be moving in. As this is a calm before the storm, the ocean would be flat and as such would act as a mirror, meaning a light orange reflection would be apparent. So I create a mixture from mid yellow, titanium white and crimson. I give it a mix and lay it into the centre of the water area. Ensure the coat is fairly thin and consistent. I mixed in a touch of water mixable linseed medium to achieve this. Then the blue sky mix can be added into the left hand side. Keep this blue out of the orange until the coat is laid in. Once it is laid in, bring the blue into the orange. Use long horizontal strokes and wipe the excess colour from the brush from time to time to avoid excess contamination. The blue is the stronger of the tones and if it is taken in too far, it's hard to lighten the blue with the orange and it goes an unrealistic green colour. Follow the same technique obviously on the right side, but remember to add differing tones into the water. Hold the brush ever so lightly. This way the filaments skin the surface and don't mar the coat. Soften the horizon line if it needs it, then lay some orange into the water area directly beneath the hot spot of the sun. 
the base will overpower the orange, so the tip of the brush needs to be wiped continually to keep the tone strong. Roughly blend it in with quick strokes, but don't over blend it. Add some water mixable linseed oil medium to some mid yellow and apply it over the orange coat just laid down. The medium gives the colour a little translucence and if applied lightly, sits on the surface rather than amalgamating with the underlying colour. Kind of like a wet on wet glaze, I guess. The result would be better if the previous layer was allowed to dry, but sometimes time is of the essence. To suggest the bright white of the sun, lay in some pure titanium white into the yellow coat and bring it down the canvas. Well, thanks for watching. We hope you have been able to pick up some techniques to use with your art. Remember, you can share your creative projects on social media using hashtag MontmartArt. We look forward to your creations and we'll see you next time.